Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. So this is the Dragon 32 computer and I have got myself a little assignment. Let's take a look. The assignment or uh, job I <laughs> signed up for is this uh, cassette and uh, yeah some guy on the internet asked me if I could uh, figure out, out this tape and read it uh, out in such a way that it can be uh, sent to him over the internet and can be loaded onto uh, Dragon32. And I said yes, uh, I have no idea what's on this tape and he doesn't either but uh, yeah I thought that would be a fun thing to try and uh, do and uh, it might uh, be a really short video. Uh, it says Figurtegner, that's Norwegian figure drawer. So uh, maybe some kind of a drawing program or some homemade program, we'll see if we can even load it. Before I continue, I just want to say thank you to my sponsor PCB Way. They do a great job at producing prototype PCBs. I have used them many times, so I really appreciate the cooperation. If you want to have produced your own PCBs, then just visit pcbway.com and you can get an instant quote right now with 10 PCBs for as low as 5 US dollars. Besides PCB manufacturing, they also do CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication and 3D printing. So that's all your needs for your hobby projects. Also visit their shared project site where you can find a lot of ready-made great designs which you can order PCBs directly from this site. So go ahead and visit PCBWay.com right now. But first I need to set up the machine. I haven't shown you this Dragon 32 a lot in my videos before because I haven't used it a lot. I did some restoration work on it uh, when I got it, but uh, since then I haven't used it. Yeah, it works and uh, let's take it out. Here it is, looks very nice. It's been cl cleaned up as I said and uh, yeah, I have the power supply, the original. It has this weird uh, contact 9 pin uh, to uh, <laughs> the power input, uh, yeah. Let's hook it up. I also got this uh, tape uh, cable here and a brand new video cable for uh, the Dragon. The machine is uh, very light. Uh, it's like there's nothing in it uh, <laughs> if you compare uh, the size of the machine. But uh, yeah, it has a simple motherboard. Yeah, and we need uh, the tape and it connects on this side. All right, let's uh, turn it on. Yeah, there you have it, the Dragon Data. And as you can see, <laughs> it uses the same uh, Microsoft Basic that uh, is used in uh, many other uh, retro machines from um, the 80s. Uh, yeah, like the Laser 200 machine that you have seen on my channel several times. Uh, the picture is a little bit unstable, you can see it uh, shaking a bit. I don't know how to fix that, but I'm uh, just gonna leave it uh, like that. So to be able to uh, load the cassette, I obviously need a cassette recorder. And uh, yeah, this one has uh, three two and a half inch, I think. Or, no, it's one, one and a half and two three millimeter jacks or 3.5. Uh, yes, so I need a tape recorder that has the same. I think I have one. I have this one. It's a Panasonic and uh, yeah, it has a lot of adjustments for um, both speed and uh, audio load level. And it also supports a double speed loading, but um, not going to use that. However, it, it is uh, from Japan, so it has a 110 volt. Uh, plug here so I need a step down converter to use it. Yes and this is uh, the step down 
a transformer it's called plug that in and then i can plug this in here it's a lot of cables and uh, stuff to, to hook up and a lot of uh, a mess on my uh, <laughs> bench here yeah it works it has the sticker on uh, one side so i suppose it's uh, that one uh, no it's that way just rewind it and this has uh, the correct connectors i guess uh, the tin one goes there that's the remote control or the motor control then it has a load and save i guess uh, red is red it's save and load is the white and blue the cassette recorder has a monitor button which ma makes you hear <laughs> the sound from the tape from the actual uh, recorder. I said Panasonic but obviously it's a Sanyo. <laughs> Almost correct, <laughs> maybe not. All right, let's see if we can load this tape. C load, I guess it is. Cassette load. Yeah, it says uh, S. Okay, something happened on the screen, the S turned inverse. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna turn off uh, the audio here because uh, this takes uh, probably a few minutes. Too noisy. Wasn't it supposed to show a file name or something in the beginning of the loading? Not really sure on this machine. Well. It's been loading for a few minutes, but um, nothing more happened. The tape is finished. Just gonna try and adjust a little bit on the settings. There's this face setting. It's currently in reverse and uh, it has a normal setting. I should have used that first. Then I'm gonna set the load level to max and then we'll see. Nope, still wouldn't load, so I'm gonna try some other settings. There's this mode switch. It has mode 1, which says level fix, and mode 2 and 3. I'm not really sure uh, what's the difference. I'm gonna try um, yeah, a little different settings and maybe a little bit uh, lower uh, load level. Maybe it's uh, overpowering <laughs> with it on max. And uh, I'll be back if I have a result. I'm actually trying with an original uh, Dragon 32 cassette. This is a game I Ching <laughs> and see if I can load that before I try the other tape. Yeah, this one loads. Uh, yeah, and it actually shows a file name here, I Ching. So now we know that it's supposed to show F and the name of uh, the tape. And I have the face on normal and the mode to mode 2 and the load level around 8. I wonder why they chose the green background on some of these machines. I mean, uh, <laughs> black or uh, yeah, blue would have been less sickening. This tape recorder was, by the way, made for MSX uh, machines that uh, Sanyo um, had back in the day. And um, yeah, <laughs> from Japan. I have uh, several MSX machines. I have used this before and uh, it worked on the MSX at least. Now I tried a couple of other original uh, <laughs> Dragon 32 tapes but uh, couldn't get them to load and it actually it sounded like um, the tape was a little bit... Uh, yeah, it actually did something... Um, nasty to the tape and see the tape isn't uh, very uh, even uh, seems like uh, this drive tries to damage my tapes i'm gonna find another one i have this laser dr10 it's um, for the laser 200 machine 
Let's try this one instead, see if we get any result. There's nothing to adjust on this, but uh, I think it's the same principle. You just have to press play. Yeah, it started to load at least. We'll see if it uh, will <laughs> complete it. No, just get an IO error. I'm gonna try another tape. Obviously these old tapes can have gone bad <laughs> during the years, but uh, eventually we need to find one that works. Let's try this mind out. Found mind out. Yes, finally that loaded. <laughs> I was not gonna type load, I was gonna type list. Yeah, so that's a basic program. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Okay, so how do we play? <laughs> Go! I don't know what kind of keys to use. Mind your head, stunned. Okay, all right, so this worked. I'm not gonna bother you with playing this <laughs> lousy game, but uh, let's try now with the other tape that I'm supposed to load. Just gonna have to wait. Nope, it didn't load anything at all, so it seems like it just can't register a <laughs> correct signal at all. And it doesn't even fail or anything, so um, that's kind of strange. So I now try the cload m command, which you are supposed to use if you want to load something written in machine code. But uh, there's no difference so far. Yeah, that just stopped with an IO error but there is a program in fact so it has loaded something <laughs> well <laughs> well that was just the game I loaded before uh, it seems like if you press the reset button uh, the program is not cleared so <laughs> kind of strange no it's cleared for sure if we take a look at the tape, it looks fine, but of course it can be uh, reduced and uh, worn out. Uh, but at least when I tried it with the first cassette recorder, uh, the audio was uh, loud and clear. All right, so loading this tape from a cassette recorder uh, doesn't work, at least not with the two uh, recorders I have. So I'm going to try another approach and that is to load the actual audio into a modern computer as a WAV file and then we can perhaps uh, take a look at the file and uh, try to um, enhance it a bit, uh, boost it a little bit and then play it from some virtual tape recorder. All right, so let me try and record the audio from the cassette recorder to my uh, Windows computer. I have this uh, three and a half millimeter uh, audio cable here. It's um, a mono cable, so I'm just plugging that in, in the output, and it's connected to the microphone in. You obviously need a computer that has an analog microphone input. And then I'm using uh, the program Audacity, which is a popular uh, audio editor or sound editor. Um, you can record samples with it. So I have set up the audio here with the correct recording device, which is the microphone. And also in the audio settings, I have uh, selected uh, mono and I left the default 44.1 uh, kilohertz frequency, sampling frequency, everything else I just left as is. So let's try now and uh, record. Yeah, that seems to work. So I think you need to uh, adjust the audio recording level so that it doesn't over blow the, <laughs> the input. So I just drag it down to um, around uh, yeah, 60%, 55. 
Yeah, 55. And now we can see the whole waveform. All right, so now I'm gonna record the whole thing from the start to finish. That's gonna take a few minutes. So uh, yeah, I'll be back when this has finished. And then we can actually listen to the recording. Okay, so it finished and uh, yeah, <laughs> it was like uh, eight minutes, over eight minutes uh, long. And uh, it seems like it uh, went all right. Yeah, we can listen to it on the computer and we can zoom in, look at the signal. Mm. So here we can see the beginning and uh, yeah, it started there. If we zoom in real uh, long, you can see the actual uh, data here. Yeah, the pulses for, uh, I guess, each individual bit probably have some encoding or something. I'm not too familiar with uh, cassette audio format for computers. I haven't studied it, but yeah. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is to record uh, one original tape and uh, see if we can observe any difference in uh, uh, the data. I'm gonna record uh, the game that I managed to load. So that loaded and as we can see, it looks uh, very similar. So uh, yeah, both files have some gaps uh, here and there. Uh, the first uh, one has several gaps where it kind of stops and continues. The known game has a gap in the middle here, but otherwise they look uh, okay. I mean, the first file looks a little bit uneven in the waveform. You can see it uh, here. Um, yeah, but the second file looks much smoother. So maybe there's something there. Okay, now I'm gonna try just to play back the audio from the uh, Windows machine to the Dragon. And uh, yeah, that's just a matter of uh, connecting this cable from the output of the machine, the headphone connector to the input of the Dragon and try and adjust the volume right so that it can read uh, some data. Yeah, try and load and then I just play back the file from uh, the Windows machine. See if it detects it. Yeah, found Cruise 1. <laughs> so that worked. I have copied a game. I'm a pirate. It actually says here on the tape, it's a warning label. This program is protected by law. Coping is not allowed and you will be reported to the police. Yeah, and the program loaded. This was the death cruise. Mm. Okay, 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 okay. Oof. All right, let me try the unknown tape then. See if we have any luck there. No, it didn't detect any file name at least. Yeah, as expected it played to the end but then uh, nothing happened so the computer cannot read this either which is uh, to expect. I mean you <laughs> you have uh, shit in then you get shit out. Also I'm wondering the file it's eight minutes long audio and that seems a little bit too long for this 32 kilobyte machine. I mean, this game, it's only one and a half minutes. Let's say this was 10K, then eight minutes will uh, be uh, yeah six times that. And that's uh, yeah <laughs> 60K, so roughly. If I zoom uh, in on the waveform, we can see that they are kind of similar. I mean, there's this waveform where you have um, short and long pulses. However, the original tape seems a little bit uh, different. It seems like the short pulses are kind of shorter than uh, on uh, the unknown tape. So I wonder if this tape actually is for this machine or if it is for something else. Anyway, now that I have the files on my computer, I can transfer them to a memory card and use uh, some other device. Uh, for example, this one, the SVI-CAS, uh, 
This makes it easier to um, connect to other computers as well. I am a little bit convinced now that the cassette, uh, the unknown cassette is uh, not for the Dragon. So I'm going to try a couple of other machines. This is really a handy device. It works with a lot of machines and uh, yeah, it is able to play uh, regular WAV files alongside other types of formats like CAS and yeah, Commodore tap files and things like that. Files and then you find uh, the folder you want. I think I have uh, an unknown folder here. Open the folder and there's the dead cruise. So let's try see load just to demonstrate that it uh, works. Oh, but obviously I need to uh, insert the cable. Now we can uh, open that and yeah, it says not supported. I thought this would be able to play WAV files. So I thought it supported the regular WAV files, but it doesn't. So there are several tools that you can use to convert these uh, WAV files into CAS files for uh, the Dragon and other machines. Uh, I'm not going to do that now. Instead, I'm going to demonstrate by downloading uh, some games. See if we can load those in CAS format. So let's see this uh, clones. So you then just uh, C load and uh, press play. Okay, found clones three. So this also have uh, audio uh, feedback, so you can uh, listen to the sample. You can, uh, of course, turn it off if you like. Yeah, that loaded. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what key to use. Uh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> okay, seems like I lost. All right, that demonstrated uh, how you can load from a virtual uh, tape device like this. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna try and uh, load that file, the unknown file, onto some other computers from my PC. See if we can figure out what it is for. Let's try with the Commodore 64 first. And I guess this video became long after all. <laughs> That's how it is sometimes. So to load to the Commodore, it has, uh, of course, this um, edge connector. And uh, yeah, I have this cable here that you can actually use with one of these or plug into a computer which I'm gonna do so let's try and load and uh, yeah it says press play on tape and for um, simulating uh, pressing play and uh, starting the motor we need to short this I guess yeah okay then I just uh, play from the PC now, I don't know if I use the correct uh, cable. There's two and there one is for reading, one for writing, and I don't know which. Um, it's not marked. No, it didn't load anything. So I'm gonna try the other cable. Nope, no luck there either. Hmm. Just to make sure that I have the setup with the cable uh, correct, and this, this machine in fact can load something. Just gonna try and load it tape file for the Commodore 64. Yeah, that works. Um, it doesn't sound quite like the unknown file that we have. So probably not for the Commodore 64. All right, so that loaded, worked. Okay, that's 1943, I'm not gonna play. But at least now I know that uh, it's this cable I'm gonna use. <laughs> so I'm just gonna mark it with a white uh, dot. All right, so I'm just gonna try different um, modifications to the file in Audacity and see if we can get this file loaded. Nope, seems like uh, this file is not for the Commodore 64 or the quality is so low that it can't be loaded. I'm gonna try another machine then. How about the ZX Spectrum? <laughs> I 
Well, it reacted. No, nothing. Doesn't like it. Next machine is an MSX. <laughs> so, yeah, I think we need to short that. Um, it has this motor control as well. It couldn't load on the MSX. Just comparing now with the real MSX uh, tape file and uh, it sounds completely different. So it's not for that machine either. Well, I hooked up the Commodore 64 again because I talked to some guys on a forum and I sent the unknown file and uh, some claim that it is for the Commodore 64 and one guy even took the file and boosted it and was able to load it on uh, the Wise emulator. So I was thinking, why don't I just simply load the cassette <laughs> on the C64 and uh, see if it actually loads. Let's see now. <laughs> Look at that. How funny. And here I thought it was for the Dragon machine all the time and it is for the C64. Wow, look at that. Some data 1983. Wait. So that actually loaded, but there seems to be some issues with the, the sprites there. Okay. I don't know what this is, 1984, Jan Sverre Samuelsen. So it's some kind of drawing program. Let me try and figure out what uh, this does. <laughs> yeah, seems like you can edit and uh, do something here, but I'm not entirely sure without some kind of manual. I can move some kind of cursor down, but um, not anywhere else. Okay, well, looks kind of cool. Uh, yeah, I'm glad I actually was able to run it. Now that means I can convert it to a tap file, I guess. I'm gonna try that now. So I converted it to a tap and uh, now it's uh, able to load in uh, voice emulator. And here we see the file names, figure editor, some other files. So now it should be possible to load it here. So loading a tape from um, Wise isn't any faster than loading from a real uh, uh, computer. So um, yeah, takes a while. Yeah, and there it loaded in Wise. So um, yeah, that worked. <laughs> Mystery solved. And uh, now I can send this tap file to the guy that sent me the tape so that he can uh, somehow archive it somewhere. I don't know where, but uh, that's not my job, I think. <laughs> yeah, the program seems to just be a sprite editor, in fact, and uh, <laughs> I have no idea how to use it um, because there were no instructions. So let's just trial and error. I couldn't manage to do anything uh, <laughs> real here. It seems like it just generates some random patterns here. Uh, so for converting to tap file I use the program called audio tap so you can check that out if you want to do something like that. All right that was it for this video. It became a lot longer than I thought but uh, that's how it is sometimes. You start a simple project and it turns into more complex. However if I have just tested the tape uh, on the 64 in the beginning I would have made a shorter video I guess but at least now you learned something I hope how to convert uh, programs to tape files and uh, play back from a modern computer and stuff like that so hope that was enjoyable. So I'm just gonna say thanks a lot for watching and for subscribing and a special thank you to my patrons. See you bye bye. Thank you.